Uh, okay, seven Republican presidential hopefuls are getting ready for their second primary debate taking place tonight. Yes, uh, they still have no uh, opportunity to really divide that gap or squeeze that gap no. down when it comes to comparing uh, to former President Trump's numbers. But you've got Governor Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, former Vice President Mike Pence, uh, Senator Tim Scott, Chris Christie, Vivek Ramaswamy, North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum. I try to say all these names very quickly because it's a lot. You did well. Yeah. Asa Hus Hutchinson, almost, uh, <laughs> appeared at the first debate but did not meet the requirements for round two. He says he'll continue to campaign and President Trump skipping everything because he's going to be in Michigan instead uh, with the striking United Auto Workers. A bipartisan lobbyist has a new political trend analysis out and it asks, does either party really want to win the 2024 presidential election? Bruce Melman cites the unpopularity of both Biden and Trump claiming a rematch between the two rivals would be, quote, the least anticipated sequel since Caddyshack 2. That's cute. Uh, the Hills editor-in-chief, Bob Cusack, is here. Good morning to you. You know, Bruce Melman, he certainly has a way with words. His analyses, they've garnered a lot of attention in the past. But what he's writing about is essentially voter apathy. We all know about yeah. voter apathy. Besides the Caddyshack reference, why is this such a hot read? Well, it's a hot read, Adrian, just because two out of three Americans do not want to see this rematch. They they didn't like uh, the first run of it, and they certainly don't want to see it again. But at the same time, uh, there are enough Democrats who support Biden that he's likely to get the nomination unless he drops out for health reasons or whatever. And there's a lot of speculation on that. But I, I don't see that at this point. And obviously, uh, Trump has the base, and, and that's why he's not going to these debates. So even though there's a lot of dissatisfaction with both these men, there's enough support to win their nominations. Yeah. And, and again, apathy, no duh. Uh, another poll from 538 also showing the obvious unfavorable views of both presidents Biden and Trump. Uh, you know, it's like, tell me something I don't know is what I always want to say when I see these uh, pundits come out. But what's really buzzy is what I said at the beginning. Both parties are trying to lose the 2024 election. Those are his words. How could he say this? Well, you know, I think it's somewhat tongue in cheek, especially the Caddyshack line. I mean, a lot of viewers may not remember Caddyshack. That was a, that was a pretty good movie. 2020 was uh, Caddyshack was better than 2020. Let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, both parties have problems. Uh, they both have uh, intra-party fights. Uh, certainly a lot of Republicans do not like Trump. A lot of Democrats want to move on from Biden. So these are potentially not the strongest candidates, certainly. And if you look at the polls, that's the case. Nikki Haley is beating Joe Biden in a head-to-head -head matchup, but can she get to the finals? Can she beat Trump? That's the big question. And there are some Democrats, and and there's some unrest. Uh, Democratic strategist, old Clinton hand, James Carville, is concerned about Biden and his age, as are others. And they think if Biden doesn't run, yes, it would be messy, but you'd get a, a better and definitely younger candidate to take on Trump. Certainly. Uh, but do they have the chutzpah? Uh, to defeat Trump. Is that the question? Melman giving a handful of reasons both Biden and Trump could drop out, though, again, far-fetched. Uh, all of us know, unless something really terrible happens, neither one of them is going to drop out. Uh, but dark reasons for why, according to Melman, looking into the crystal ball, stating uh, that a health scare, a family crisis, or losing the support of the Democratic establishment could get President Biden to step aside. Meanwhile, Melman predicts President Trump could bow out if the GOP back a single anti-Trump candidate, if he's found guilty in one of the four criminal cases he faces, or if he is, his health suddenly declines. Is this the time for worst-case scenarios? It is, but also time is running out uh, as far as replacing either one of them on the ballot. I mean, certainly Joe Biden was uh, helped by a better than anticipated showing in the midterms. And his poll numbers recently, uh, we saw a Washington Post poll that was not good for the White House. Uh, but it's kind of getting late in the game. So replacing Biden uh, or replacing Trump, if he were to bow out, would be difficult. And I think anyone who would replace Trump uh, can't be the anti-Trump mantle like Chris Christie, even though he's very entertaining in debates. I think you're going to have to have someone who uh, is, is at likeable? least friendly with Trump. Yeah, friendly. well, likable would be helpful, too. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.